Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. It's 30 days to go to GCSE Math exam, so keep up the hard work, you're doing really, really well. And today we're going to be focused on the topic of area under a graph. Now, I really like this topic because the questions that you can be asked are, I like them. You could be given a travel graph and you might need to work out the area underneath it and then I might tell you the distance traveled. It could be that you're given a curve and you've then got to work out an estimate for the area under the curve. And that's quite cool because then you might be asked a question whether it's an underestimate or an overestimate and things like that. And in this video, we're going to look at that. So hopefully you find this video really useful today. If you've got the Corp Manager Revision cards, card number 65 would be a useful one for you because uh, card number 65 is the card on area under a graph. And that's it, so let's get started. Hi, today we're gonna to be looking at the area under a graph. So in this video, I'm gonna go through a question for you, and then there's gonna be one for you to try. And then I also I'd highly recommend the practice questions that I just give you a bit of a variety of different style of questions, and also be able to draw on the graphs quite useful as well. Okay, so let's have a look at our first question. So it says, here's a speed time graph for a bicycle. So we've got a speed time graph for a bicycle here. So if we have a look at it, we've got the time from naught to 20 seconds, and then we've got this curve to so the speeds going up as the time's going up. And we've got the speed, it's starting from zero, and it's going up to 10 meters per second and our first part part a says find an estimate for the distance traveled by the bicycle in the first 16 seconds use four strips of equal width so if we have a look at this we want to find the distance traveled over the first 16 seconds and it says four strips of equal width so if we take our 16 seconds and then divide that by four that's going to be equal to four so each strip is going to be four seconds wide so let's draw our strips on the diagram so we've got four strips of equal width and actually let's join them up and as you can see, we've just joined them up. So we've got a triangle, a trapezium, a trapezium, and a trapezium. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of the triangle, the area of the trapezium, the area of the trapezium, and the area of the trapezium, and then add them all up. And then that'll give us our estimate for the area under the graph, or the our estimate for the distance traveled in the first 16 seconds. And actually, just before we get started, I'm actually just going to write down some coordinates. So I'm going to write down the coordinates of this point, this point, this point, this point, and this point, because that'd be useful for me. So in terms of this point, that's the point zero, zero, the origin. This point here, well, it's four across so four across and in terms of the height well, we're going from zero up to one in one two three four five little lines and one divided by five is equal to 0 0.2 so we've got 0 0.2 four six eight so it's going to be 0.8 meters per second okay next point so it's going to be eight seconds and the speed is two meters per second so eight two eight long two up this point here is 12 along four up so 12 along and four up and our last point up here, it's 16 along, so 16. So 16 along, and in terms of the height, well, it's one line above 7, so it's going to be 7.2. So we've got our coordinates, that's going to be helpful for us in terms of finding the areas. So we want to find the area of A, triangle A, trapezium B, trapezium C, and trapezium D. And that'll give us our estimate for the area under the graph, and the area under a speed time graph will be the distance. So that'll give us our estimate for the distance traveled in the first 16 seconds. Okay, so I've just shrunk that to give us a bit more room. So in terms of triangle A, so in terms of A, triangle A, it's a triangle, so we're going to do half the base times the height. Well, it's going to be a half of. So the base of it is 4, and the height of it is 0 0.8. So we're going to do half the base times the height. So we're going to do half times 4 times 0 0.8. And whenever we do that, we get... And that's equal to 1.6 meters. So our estimate for the distance traveled in the first four seconds would be 1.6 meters. Okay, B. Now B is a trapezium, so let's find the area of the trapezium. So I'm actually just going to write up here the formula for area of a trapezium because it's going to be quite useful for you whenever you're doing these questions. So the area of a trapezium is area equals a half, and then in brackets, A plus B, they're the lengths of the parallel sides, multiplied by the height, the distance between them. So if we turn our head sideways here, and we look sideways at B, you can see there's a trapezium, and you can see that the, this side and this side would be the the parallel sides and the distance between them the height of the trapezium if your heads turn sideways would be this distance here the four and that's it okay so let's get there that trapezium b so that'll be a half and then in brackets a plus b so that's the length of the two parallel sides that's so just going to be 0 0.8 plus 2 so 0 0.8 plus 2 and then the distance between them would be four so multiply by four and whenever we work that out we get that's equal to 5.6 meters, so 5.6 meters. So our estimate for the distance traveled between four seconds and eight seconds would be 5.6 meters. Okay, next, trapezium C, so let's get there with that trapezium. I remember the area for trapezium is a half, A plus B, multiplied by the height. So if we look at C and turn our head sideways, you can see the two parallel sides, so that side and that side, and then the distance between them, the height of the trapezium would be that, if our heads turn sideways. So we're gonna do a half of, two plus four multiplied by the distance between them which is four so let's do that half of the two parallel sides which would be this height and this height so two plus four multiplied by the distance between them which is four and whenever we do that we get 
that's equal to 12 meters. So our estimate for the distance traveled by the bicycle between eight seconds and 12 seconds would be 12 meters. Okay, and finally, trapezium D, as you can see here, this is gonna be our biggest area in terms of A, B, and C, and D. So that's gonna be a half off. Well, let's turn our head sideways. Two parallel sides will be four and 7.2. So four plus 7.2. Sorry, excuse my writing, I'm looking sideways. <laughs> multiply by the height, the distance between them, which would be four, so multiply by four. And whenever we do that, we get, that's equal to 22.4 meters. So we've got the area of A, the area of B, the area of C, and the area of D. Let's add them all up and see what we get. And that's equal to 41.6 meters. So our estimate for the total distance traveled by the bicycle in the first 16 seconds is 41.6 meters. Okay, and our next part, our next part says, is our answer to A, that the question we've just done, an underestimate or an overestimate to the actual distance traveled by the bike? So if we have a look at it, let's have a look and see if this is an overestimate or an underestimate. So we wanted to find the area under the graph, the area under that curve, that black line. And if we have a look at it, our red lines are actually going slightly above it. Our red lines are actually slightly above where the curve is particularly in d you can see it quite clearly that the actual curve is below where our line is so that means we've actually worked out a slightly bigger area and here and see you can actually see again the red line slightly above the curve so we've worked out a slightly bigger area and a slightly bigger area and a slightly bigger area so our area our distance is slightly bigger than what it actually should be so our answer is an overestimate so let's write that down so I've just written down, our answer to A is an overestimate, as the lines we've drawn, those chords, are slightly above the actual graph or curve. So the lines we've drawn are slightly above the curve, so therefore it's an overestimate. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at a question for you to try. So we've got find an estimate for the distance traveled in the first nine seconds. So let's have a look at our graph. So we've got this graph, and we want to find the, our estimate for the distance traveled in the first nine seconds. So it's a speed time graph. We want to find an estimate for the total distance traveled over the first nine seconds. So I'm just going to put nine there because it's nine seconds. And we want to find an estimate for the distance traveled over those first nine seconds. So we're going to need to find the area under that graph or under that curve. So feel free to press pause now and find out how many strips was it. It's three strips of equal width. So I want you to think about and to try and work out if you can if you can print this off and do it otherwise just think about how you would do it think about how you would get the area under that curve and then find the estimate for the total distance traveled over the first nine seconds and then afterwards then i'll go through it okay because it was three strips of equal width so i'm going to take the nine seconds and i'm going to divide that by three and that's equal to three so that means that each one of our strips is going to be three seconds wide so that means that let's draw those lines Okay, so I've drawn lines at 3 seconds, 6 seconds, and 9 seconds because I've gone 3 wide, so 3 seconds, 3 seconds, and 3 seconds. So it gives us 3 strips of equal width. And now let's join them up. So I've just joined them up, and I'm just going to write down the coordinates. So 0, 0. Here we've got 3. Okay, and then in terms of the height, well, we're going up to 5, and then it's 1 and a half of the little squares above that. So let's find out what each of the little squares is worth. So 5 divided by 10 is equal to 0 0.5. So it's going to be 5 and a half, 6. So it's in between 5 and a half and 6. So it's going to be 5. 0.75. Okay, next one, we've got six. And then in terms of its height, again, it's one and a half little squares above this line. So that's going to be 7.5, 8, 8.5. So it's in between 8 and 8.5. So it's going to be 8.25 in terms of its height. And then finally, this one, it's on the line. So it's going to be nine and then up to 10. So nine, 10. And that's it. So we've written down the coordinates of those points. Now we want to find the area of triangle A, trapezium B, and trapezium C. So let's do that. Okay, so I've just shrunk the graph to help us. So in terms of A, it's a triangle. And we do half the base times the height. So the base is 3. So we're going to do a half multiplied by the base, which is 3, multiplied by the height, which is 5.75. So 5.75. And when we work that out, we get that's equal to 8.625. So the area of triangle A is 8.625. In terms of B, the area of trapezium B, remember the area of trapezium is equal to half brackets A plus B multiplied by the height H. So that is, and if we turn our head sideways, so we're going to do a half off. Okay, and in terms of the two parallel sides, if we turn our head sideways, we've got one's 5.75 and one's 8.25. So if we add those together, 5.75 plus 8.25. And then the height, the distance between them, if we've got our head sideways again, that's equal to three. So multiply by three. And when we work that out, we get, that's equal to 21. So that means the area of that trapezium is 21. And then finally C, let's get the area of trapezium C. So we're gonna do a half off. Again, turn our head sideways. So the two parallel sides will be 8.25 plus 10. And then the distance between them is three. So multiply by three and let's see what we get. 
that's equal to 27.375. So we've got the area of A, the area of B, and the area of C. Now let's add them all together to get our estimate for the total area under the curve. So if we add those together, let's see what we get. And that's equal to 57. So our estimate for the total distance traveled in the first nine seconds would be 57 meters. And that's it. Okay, and part B. Part B says, is our answer to A, so is our previous answer, an underestimate or an overestimate for the actual distance traveled? Okay, so I want you to press pause now, and I want you to think about whether this answer of 57 meters, the area that we found, is that an underestimate or an overestimate for the total distance traveled in the first nine seconds? So feel free to do that now. So if we consider these first nine seconds and we think of the area that we've found, A plus B plus C, as you can see, it's actually below the actual curve, particularly if we look at that triangle A. That triangle A, there's actually quite a bit of a distance there that we haven't actually found the area of. So that means our answer will be an underestimate. So let's write that. And that's it. So we've just written down our answer to A is an underestimate as the lines of the chords that we've drawn are below the actual curve or the actual graph. And as you can see, the lines that we've drawn, you can see it a bit there. You can definitely see it with A and C as well. Well, it actually would be below the curve. So all of those chords, all of those lines that we've drawn are below the actual graph. So our answer is an underestimate. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we're through finding the area under a graph and those type of questions. I really hope you found it useful. And it's important to know, for instance, when it's an underestimate, when it's an overestimate, and how to work out those questions. Now, in terms of this topic, it's one of the ones where it's quite useful to be able to draw on the diagram. So I'd highly recommend the practice questions there. And in the description below, there's a link to the practice questions. Now, tomorrow there's going to be 29 days to go, so obviously the next video will be out at 3 o'clock tomorrow on YouTube, so tune into that. And keep up the hard work, you're doing really, really well. And if you've gone through all the videos so far, fantastic, well done. If not, it's a bit like a box set, you can have binge watch all those videos and uh, catch up, and, uh, and you'll do really well. So keep up the hard work, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next one. Cheers, bye.